So once again, welcome everyone and thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. My clock is showing 2.30, so why don't we get started? Just a few uh, housekeeping items. I did wanna let everybody know that we have muted uh, all lines just to try and minimize background noise and distractions for our speakers. I also wanted to let you know that we will have a question and period uh, following the presentation. So at the end uh, of both of our speakers this afternoon, uh, there will be a point in which you can either unmute your individual lines or you can type in through the chat box, which is located at the bottom of your toolbar. And so this afternoon, we're going to have two homes, the village of Aspen Lake and Chartwell Elmer, sharing their experiences with resident engagement in the hiring practices of their respective homes. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Barry and to Dana to start us off. I'm just going to unmute your lines now. Are you there, Dana? We are, thank you. Hello. Can you hear us okay? We can. Okay, great. Good. Well, thanks so much uh, for giving Barry and myself an opportunity to talk about um, something that we really feel is a, is a huge success uh, for us here at the village of Aspen Lake. Um, so, um, Schlegel Villages has a mission um, creating life purpose within a caring community. Um, our mission statement is to provide holistic health care in a home environment located within an internal neighborhood design that promotes a caring community with emphasis on optimal health and life purpose for each resident. So I think we are constantly challenging ourselves in how we can live, uh, live our mission statement. Um, one of our key success factors for uh, Schlegel Villages is changing the culture of aging. And we actually do this through working um, through different aspirations. Um, our aspirations were um, brought together by lots of different people involved in the organization and talking about what sort of things are important in changing that culture of aging. So our aspirations are promoting resident empowerment, offer flexible living, creating opportunities for meaningful and shared activities, promoting cross-functional teams, fostering authentic relationships, honoring diversity in village life, offer flexible dining, connecting research and innovation to village life, and promoting an excellent team member experience. By having residents involved in the hiring process, we actually are supporting different, um, you know, different aspirations. It definitely is promoting resident empowerment. It's offering um, opportunities for meaningful and shared uh, activities. So um, our director of recreation um, came to us um, one day and you know, brought forward an article through Changing Aging with uh, Dr. Bill Thomas, a blog. And there was an article um, titled, A Radical Idea, Residents Hiring Staff. And so we as a team um, talked about how, how is it that we could incorporate this in our day-to-day. Um, -day. So through the village advisory team, the village of Aspen Lake worked on this idea of getting residents involved in a hiring committee. Well, this hiring committee is made up of a number of residents who are supported dynamically by the leadership team. Um, the residents involved, we started with a number of about six residents that were involved. We are now averaging about four. And these are very active residents within the community. And this committee has, was promoted initially through the residents council and the residents interested were able to volunteer to be a part of the hiring process. The residents council is very powerful and dynamic in our service here and uh, are fully supportive of this program of allowing residents to be involved in the hiring process. The leadership team was approached to support the interviews during the hiring process. 
I feel that the leadership team is an important part of the process. And I have comfort in knowing that someone is there. And if there is a struggle and conversation, the clarification is needed or sometimes just to redirect, it's great to have that support, even to explain more about what we do and how we can support people that are living in long-term care. Education is fundamental to any, any project that involves growth. If you lack the education, you, you diminish your efforts. So education is provided on, a, on proper hiring techniques. We often have gone over the do's and the don'ts of the interviews, watching our language, making sure that we smile and engage with the applicants and to appear our best and offer the best speech that we can, making sure that we are heard. And at the same time, if we have difficulty hearing an applicant, it's not an issue or a problem to ask them to speak up. I have a minor hearing problem and I have often asked a number of them to speak more clearly or more loudly. Uh, we've reviewed the questions that mean something to the residents that are here. And this can be applicable to almost any nursing home environment. The residents review applicant so that the questions can be modified dependent on the position the person is applying for. Examples would be the environmental services has a specific application form that would be used in the questioning and the hiring process. Food services, recreation, nursing, administration, PSWs, and so on. And we as the residents are, are directly involved in this, this commitment to offer our best in the hiring process and allowing the applicant to shine through the answers that they provide as well. As a resident, before living here at the Aston Village, my thoughts of resident empowerment were minimal. They just almost didn't exist at all. I didn't have any clue what resident empowerment could really mean. It was it would be thoughts that I can get up when I want or I can eat what I want and when I want. But Aspen Lake, through our aspirations that were just outlined, I was asked to be involved in supporting those that work here. It filled a blank slate in my mind and in my heart with nothing there. So there were new ideas and new experiences, new opportunities for empowerment by becoming a part of a team, part of something that's bigger than ourselves. And knowing that you can be an active part of that team is important. But you have, don't have to be <clears throat> sitting on the sidelines. Too many residents are found that way and it's an opportunity to approach one-on-one -on -one and ask them if they might be interested in being a part of a hiring process. So one of the things when, when Barry moved in, Barry and I spent a lot of time together that first year um, and really, you know, really struck up a friendship between the two of us. And one of the things that I really noticed with, with Barry is that he was looking for more. He was looking for something to kind of renew and re-spark something in his life. Um, lots of different things um, came to mind. We talked to Barry about joining our village advisory team, which is a committee that acts as wise counsel in support of our culture change journey um, and really talk to Barry about what different opportunities he would like to see in his life um, at, um, at the village. One of the great things um, as well is, you know, we're not afraid to take risks and we're not afraid to support what residents are looking for in their lives. And um, I'll let Barry talk a, a little bit about some of his personal experiences, but you know, one of the things that we looked at um, is, um, you know, 
allowing and, and sorry, not allowing, but supporting Barry to attend a conference that we would typically um, support team members to um, to participate in, uh, but you know, really looking at Barry about what hit the journey and what culture change meant to him, and how we could support him uh, being at you know being able to attend that that uh, that conference. So, I'll let Barry talk a little bit about his own personal growth. Some of the areas where I have experienced the most growth is in my commitment. <clears throat> my commitment, first of all, to me that I still am a living human being. My mind is still active. My body is not totally functional, but works. And taking advantage of my mind and body as best that I can for my commitment to me to grow and do things that, that would refresh my, my interest in life again. I have been actively involved in a number of the committees and, and events that are happening here at Aspen Lake. And, um, Another area of growth for me has been in the community of unity, that there's a bond that develops when you're working together as a team. Without that emphasis of teamwork, we lose our, our independence. Um, <clears throat> I say that because in losing our commitment and in our inabilities that we perceive to be inabilities may hinder our interest in development. If I can in some way manage to work with the team that, exi that exists here now, then there's greater opportunities for me to grow, greater opportunities for responsibility, and greater opportunities for sharing my commitment and what it means to me to be living in a village that supports me, that encourages me, that develops me as a human being, not dying but living as best I can. Great, thanks Barry. So moving on to the interview process. Um, so when we uh, are looking at team members, we're inviting uh, team members, potential uh, team members to be invited to a group interview. So after the group interview, we then move on to a different, um, a different interview and successful candidates are asked to come back and meet with our neighborhood coordinators and the director of the department that they are applying to. Um, the neighborhood coordinator um, for other um, homes may be a similar role to a unit manager um, or a mini GM, but um, our neighborhood coordinators each support two of our neighborhoods um, where our residents are living. Um, so they, with the director of that department, um, then look at supporting um, a second interview. Successful uh, candidates are then asked to come back and meet with a resident uh, from the hiring committee as well as a leadership team member. If successful candidates are asked to join the Aspen team, this gives us a feeling of reward. It gives us a feeling of success in our own lives. We've been a part of a team that is not only moving forward, but moving in a direction that allows for residents to grow and prosper and be the people that we, we've become even to this point. And change might be an interesting part of that too. Um, I, can, I can refer a number of times to the change that's happened in my life, but I can see it in other residents as well, where they've been maybe reserved in their character. At the same time, when given an opportunity to share in the team and with the team in the hiring process, it gives them that opportunity to grow and to flourish and to bear fruit that, uh, that helps support the entire village. So looking at the impact that um, being a part of this, um, this process has on residents, um, had an opportunity to talk to two other team uh, residents who are involved in on this committee. Um, so one of our residents, Leona, stated to me, it makes me feel good that I can help out. My judgment and answers are always respected. I get to meet the team, to know them, to laugh with them. And Harold shared with us that it really builds his self-esteem. 
He says, I feel needed that someone wants me to be a part of something. I've shared that in my past experience as an executive, particularly with Nortel Communications, I had 230 employees under my care and management. And <clears throat> for me, moving from that experience that I've had, not just one experience I've had, there's been a few others as well that have prospered me greatly. But here, um, I'm feeling greatly re-energized. I feel about hiring people as a part of my work here as well. It's not just the team, it's not just the administration, but I and others as residents are empowered, invited to become part of a, an exciting team. Um, <clears throat> it's important for me to feel as significant as any other team member. It is rewarding to have the experience and know that your voice is heard and respected. And that in itself, is empowerment. Questions that we ask are open-ended. There are approximately 12 questions that we ask and they're meant to encourage conversation. Uh, some of the questions that we ask might include um, about work performance from your, what would your past employers say about your work performance? And the following questions describe your work ethic. So it gives the, us a, an opportunity to see the, um, the response that a past employer might give or proceed from the applicant at any rate, but the answer that they might give is important for our understanding about their work performance. And secondly, the work ethic is very individual. This is where I come in as a human being, as a work person coming into a new place to work. <clears throat> what has been my work ethic? Then I have another two other special questions. One of them is, if I were to ask you for a cup of coffee and it's 10 to 10.30 at night, would you get it for me? And the responses have been phenomenal. Yes <laughs> for many and no for many. And uh, it's an opportunity for us to share with them what the principles are that we share here as a team. That yes, if a resident wants a cup of coffee, it may be 10.30 at, at night. <clears throat> we only offer decaf anyway, but irrelevant. <laughs> their willingness to serve the resident makes a client-centered care. That is critically important. And we focus that greatly here at the, at the village. And <clears throat> when you're coming in to visit a resident in a room as a new, a new hire, what might be some of the things you would talk about while visiting in a room with a, with a resident? And there, again, responses would be, I don't know why, I guess I would want to find out more about the person. Or another person responds with, well, I've seen a number of plaques on your wall. How important is each one of those? How did you receive those? Getting to know the resident one-on-one -on -one so that we can have that relationship develop and grow and flourish for the purpose of the work here at Aspen Lake. Those are just a few of the questions that we might ask. Then, um, I also find that I enjoy when people ask their questions of me. We give them that opportunity at the end of the interview. Do you have any questions for me? And I've been asked a number of different questions. Two that stand out for me. Number one is, what do you look for in a new person working here? And my answer has always been commitment. I want to see you being committed to the work that you do, to be the best that you can be, and to offer your service whenever and wherever it might be needed. So I look for confidence in that person. I think the other thing that I look for is their ability to respond clearly, that their answers don't float around for 10 minutes, and I'm not letting them run around for 10 minutes, but I look for a sharpness in response. Are they looking at me directly? Are they responding to me? Are they answering both my question as well as my, my partner at the, as a team? But seeing that their, their answers are, are positive answers, looking for short and concise answers is important. Seeing the candidate's potential to work 
as a vital team member is critically important. We are a team, we live as a team, we work as a team. And that potential has to be seen in whatever new hire we look at. We also share in our organization philosophy that we are different and that we are the leaders in culture change for age. We are the leaders, we are important in this industry. And we're seeing change happen day by day. And it's because residents are empowered to do their best. And being part of a hiring process starts building relationships with these new members. When I see people after they are hired, they come to me and acknowledge me, and I build personal relationships with them, says Leona, one of the members of our hiring team. So we do respond even after the interview process. The team member and myself or whoever the uh, resident might be, and maybe one of the two persons might get involved as well, the department head or whatever, and we discuss for a few minutes about the quality of the interview, the content of the interview, and our responses to what happened during that interview, were the things that were said that were offensive to me or us. I recall on, on a couple of occasions, uh, a potential candidate would refer to residents in nursing homes, sometimes as babies. They would make the comment, well, you know what? seniors are like, they're, they're like babies and you have to do this for them and do that for them and so on. My response was offense. I was severely and greatly offended that someone would think of me or any resident in any nursing home as a child or a baby. We are not and will not be called babies. So that's important in the interview process as well. I think one of the things um, with sharing that experience with the residents, with the leadership team, is that, you know, if we are sensing that a conversation is is not going um, in favor and, and, you know, we can kind of see discomfort um, on a resident's face or kind of, you know, Barry and I have such a good relationship. I can I can see when his body language and he shifts in his chair, I know um, immediately that he's starting to be uncomfortable. So, you know, um, by being there and supporting the conversation, um, you know, we're able to kind of shift um, shift the interview in a positive way. So um, I think one of the great things as well is, you know, when we present the idea of residents being involved in the hiring process to potential team members, potential team members just have this this response that they are so excited um, that this is being offered to them and it's being offered to the residents. Um, you know, uh, feedback from uh, from team members is often that that's the favorite their favorite part of the interview process is being able to spend time with a resident and have that conversation. So, um, I, Barry and I would like to thank everyone um, for the opportunity to uh, present um, today and and share our thoughts and. Will be, uh, you know, very, um, very welcome to to questions at the end. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Thank you to both Barry and Dana. I'm now going to um, hand it over to Deb from Chartwell Elmer to share their experience. Deb, are you there? Yes, I am. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm excited to share how Chartwell Elmer has incorporated residents into their hiring process. Um, we've been involving our residents in some form of the interview process since the beginning of 2017. And I just want to tell a little bit about how this came about and what are some of the benefits that we've seen um, arise from it. Um, why did we start this process? It was really a few reasons um, that made us approach this idea. Um, the first one was a few years ago, the leadership team was noticing that we were having a higher level of turnover in staff, as well as having more staff call in sick on the weekends. This was very noticeable to our residents and they would often question, what could we do about it? The second thing we were looking at was um, finding ways to increase 
the diversity of resident volunteer jobs in our home. So we had some things like delivering mail or providing hand sanitizer to other residents at mealtimes, but we were really looking to expand that. Um, we found that all of these jobs allow our residents to have a sense of purpose and to be involved in their community. And the third thing, uh, we were looking at ways to change the culture in our home and to bring um, to life our corporate vision of happier, healthier, more, more fulfilling life experiences for our seniors. So what was the first step? The leadership team approached the idea of, of involving residents in some form. So we asked residents council to brainstorm some of the most important qualities um, they would like to see in a potential staff member. The residents came up with some obvious qualities such as being dedicated to our home, um, showing up for their weekend shifts, and being patient. So with this first step, the leadership took, uh, team took some of these suggestions and incorporated them into the interview process, letting the potential candidate know that these characteristics are important to the people that you will be serving. This was a great addition to our interview process, and we received a lot of positive feedback uh, from new staff on how this was such a great reminder to them of who they were serving and what their needs were. So this process went on for several months, but we felt that we could include them even further in the hiring process. So we took it back to Residence Council about four months later and asked if they might be interested in a larger role within the hiring process. They were asked if anyone might be interested in sitting in on the interview process. Several residents were very excited about this and volunteered immediately. The council then came up with three formal questions that the resident volunteers could use. These questions were made up, of a, up as a group and encompasses what the group felt were the most important issues to them. So, um, they, like I said, they came up with three questions. Um, the three questions are, we are looking for staff that is committed to our home and who show up for shifts, especially on weekends. Do you feel you can commit the necessary time? And if you have other commitments, um, which job would take precedent? The second question, Seniors sometimes need a little more time to process information when communicating with others. With that in mind, what are some important characteristics that you possess that you could bring to this job? And then the third question they came up with was, how will you help those who cannot speak for themselves? So I can't begin to tell you how powerful this is. Participants say, I've never been interviewed like this before. Um, imagine looking into the eyes of the senior and saying, yes, I will be there. You can count on me. It's definitely a game changer. Um, in the beginning, we had three residents who volunteered. We gave them some training as to what the process would look like. Uh, we went over some of the questions. Uh, we reviewed things that they shouldn't bring up in an interview. Um, most of them um, prefer to stick to the laid out questions, knowing that that is what their peers also feel are important. Um, um, the residents only come in for a portion of the interview, but the results have been outstanding. Um, instantly, you get a sense of how the potential staff interacts with seniors. When we first started this process, there were some concerns. I believe it was, was with our board. Uh, but our Vice President of Long-Term Care went to bat for us. We call it rising above the regs. Uh, it's providing meanif meaningful opportunities for our residents. The concerns were mainly around if the residents went off script or if they asked about how many kids they had or if they were married, those sorts of questions. So we've been very careful in selecting residents that can follow the script and understand why this is important. If they do go off script, we are there to bring them back on point. A hidden benefit uh, to having the residents as part of the hiring process is the bond that is created. 
For the resident, they know that they are partially responsible for this person being hired to care for them and their fellow seniors. And for the staff member, they have an ally on day one. So someone who is rooting for them, a familiar face, um, and it helps them to smooth the transition on that first day. So I do have some um, comments of some of the volunteers that have been involved. Um, one of the volunteer resident volunteers stated that we rely greatly on the staff on a daily basis. Being involved in this process makes me feel like I can help ensure that we hire dependable, qualified staff. Another resident commented, my dream was always to be a nurse, but I was never, never able to do that. By being involved in this process, I feel that I am part of the nursing process. I feel important being able to hire great staff that will help take care of my fellow residents and friends. The residents are very proud of their jobs, often conveying this to their families. One family stated that their dad couldn't believe that the home trusted him with such an important job. He told them that this gives him worth. And one of our new staff commented, it was important to get the perspective of the residents. And on my first day, it was nice to see a familiar face. The residents' involvement in the interview process has now been running for approximately two years. We don't know if there's a direct correlation between adding the residents to this process and better staff consistency, but we have made improvements in that area over the last couple of years. Either way, it's been a great success for all involved. It was part of the reason we won the OLTCA Workplace of the Year Award in 2018. As you have heard from the comments, it has been a great benefit to our resident volunteers. Here at Chartwell, we feel that including our residents in this process is one way that we are fulfilling our vision of happier, healthier, more fulfilling life experiences to our seniors. Thank you. Thank you so much, Deb. A uh, big thank you to, to all of our guest speakers this afternoon for, for your willingness to share um, your, your passion for this topic really comes through um, in sharing the, the power and the benefits around having residents involved. Uh, Barry, as you spoke to empowerment, um, I think you really hit the nail on the head in terms of uh, really you know, giving, giving purpose and then bringing meaning back uh, to the residents. And so at this point, I do want to open it up um, to all of those on the line for questions. Uh, just a reminder that you can uh, unmute your own line at this time, or you can type in the chat box. So I'll give everybody a couple of moments to collect their thoughts, and then I'll begin facilitating some of the questions. So we do have one question at this point in time. I do believe that this one is actually directed to uh, Deb, and Deb, your line is open. Uh, they were wondering, uh, you mentioned early on in your presentation, um, you spoke to uh, looking at ways to increase the number of resident volunteer jobs in the home, uh, and this comment's directed uh, towards that idea uh, in saying that it's often uh, a volunteer, volunteer role of the resident although this is typically uh, a, a job that's being paid for uh, by staff members. So have you explored uh, compensation for residents, whatever that might look like? Um, no, this isn't, isn't replacing any um, paid job. This is just enhancing, um, allowing them to contribute to the home um, you know, and having a say in who is here looking after them. So, we don't, other than, you know, acknowledging them as volunteers and recognizing them um, throughout the year, just as we would um, our other volunteers, um, that would be the only compensation that we, we give them. Thank you. Another question here, uh, just a comment around uh, why residents would only be involved for a uh, partial interview as opposed to the whole interview. Um, we've just found it, um, it works well for our residents. 
um, you know, they do come in and it, it's, I don't know, it's kind of nice to see um, their reaction when we say, okay, a resident is going to join us now. Um, it's really nice to see how they react to it and their responses. So we have one comment here, um, and uh, it's mentioning that they're so happy to hear this dialogue um, that's been going on this afternoon. Uh, at their specific home, they have been involving residents in the hiring process uh, and the interview process for the last five years. Uh, they are not only uh, interview, interviewing, um, but they help with the selection process as well. So residents have their own set of questions and can ask follow-up questions um, from their leading questions. And uh, just speaking to how important it is for the residents to be involved in encouraging everybody to implement this process uh, in every department of their home. If there are any more comments or questions, again, please feel free to write them in the chat box or to unmute your lines. We do have a, a comment here. Is there any advice um, to other homes and started with the implementing or changing HR practices uh, to include residents? So perhaps, um, you know, either Dana, Barry or Deb uh, could take a, a stab at answering uh, this question. Um, it's, it's Dana. Um, I think um, advice that we would give to any other homes is, is just taking that first step and making that commitment. Um, you know, we as a team have committed that every new team member that comes um, for an interview will have um, an opportunity to, to meet with the, one of our residents um, from the hiring committee. Um, so it's just really taking that, that first step, um, you know, including um, your HR, if you have that support um, through your support office or, or head office and let them know you know that you're wanting to, um, you know that you're wanting to to put this into place. You know your HR teams will be more than happy to support the questions that are asked, um, and you know kind of giving that direction um, or some you know encouragement for the education for those residents. Um, one of the things, if people are interested, um, you know where we um, really got um, you know, our questions and kind of that direction was um, through the changingaging.org, um, through that blog, through Dr. Bill Thomas. And there's a great, um, great article for, um, you know, for including residents. It's called A Radical Idea, Residents Hiring Staff. Um, and it's by Beth Baker. So, you know, it's just really, it's really having that conversation and, and committing. So Jennifer, I see your question about residents sitting in on interviews uh, for all roles or departments or just management and coordinator roles. Um, so I can say um, five years ago um, when I was hired by Aspen Lake, residents and family members were actually involved um, in, the, in that interview process. So I think we've always really been able to support um, their role in those leadership roles um, here within the village um, and really going to every department um, in all roles is really was our next step 
um, for the residents. So absolutely, um, every role, every department um, has that opportunity to meet with the residents. And we just had one more comment here around um, a resident who is actually uh, present for this uh, session this afternoon, indicating that they uh, are excited and intend to, to volunteer in such capacity. So that's already an exciting outcome from um, the stories that you were sharing um, here today. So thank you. Mm -hmm. I like Dana, this is Barry. <clears throat> I like Dana would want to encourage any home and any individual who's interested in doing something that, that builds the community that they're living in to take that step. And it is the first step, it is a baby step, but take that step and work from that point. It is critically important. Residents do feel honored and privileged to serve in that capacity as being on the, the hiring committee. We just have uh, one comment here from OARC's executive director, uh, wanting to thank all of those who engaged and support this process, uh, supporting residents to exert self-determination and purposeful dialogue that has real tangible impact is so very important. This is culture change in action. And we are thrilled to know that it is happening in long-term care homes across Ontario. Uh, she particularly liked the question that residents councils chose for potential team members that spoke to what they would do for residents who cannot speak for themselves because many, if not most residents are in that situation. However, there are meaningful ways to engage and provide support for purposeful living. So tapping into this is excellent. Well done. So I think that brings us to the end. I don't see any more comments or questions. So again, a big thank you uh, to, to both homes this afternoon for taking the time uh, to share your experiences with us. Uh, and thank you to all of you who joined on the line today and engaged in the session. Uh, I do wanna let you know that the materials uh, are available to you uh, after this session. So you can uh, download them in a PDF form so that you can take um, these ideas and examples back to, to your homes and hopefully uh, spark an idea or two uh, and implement um, similar practices within your own homes. So again, thank you to everybody who was on the line today and bye for now. Thank you so much. Thank you.